They'll be looking for their first road win against UAB. The Blazers lead the all-time series four wins to two, with UTSA capturing their most recent meeting last year in San Antonio with a narrow 34-31 win to capture the Conference USA West Division title. Now the Roadrunners are looking for their second straight 5-0 start in conference play. Are we desperate or are we prosperous? Man, it's been a while since we've lost, right? What does that Texas locker room, what does that feel like? What does that Houston locker room feel like? We'll experience that again Saturday if we don't play desperate. This is a really good football team that's very well coached. That's had, uh, you know, they've been snake bit uh, at the end of ball games. On the road, mind you. Not, they haven't been snake bit at home. Kickoff in Birmingham on Saturday is set for 2.30 p.m. Like the Roadrunners, the Texas Longhorns will have their hands full when they fly to Manhattan to face 13th-ranked Kansas State Saturday night. The Longhorns are now two-and-a-half-point favorites, despite the fact they're coming off a bye week following a narrow 41-34 loss to Oklahoma State. And Kansas State blanked the Cowboys 48-0 in Manhattan just last weekend. Now the Horns look for their first road win of the season with the win over OU, of course, at a neutral site not considered. Last week, the team held a players-only meeting, and this was what was said. We were just, you know, harping on, you know, we just got to take it one day at a time. You know, we can't look at, you know, us winning out or us trying to get to a Big 12 champion. Like, we can't look at that uh, anymore because, you know, when adversity hits, then that's what we start thinking about. And then it just really, it, it hurts the team. So we just got to take, you know, every practice one day at a time and, and understand that, you know, everything's in front of us, but we got to, you know, take it, you know, by, by one step. You got it. Win the day. Kickoff in Kansas between Texas and Kansas State on Saturday is set at 6 p.m. When the fight Texas Aggies face the Florida Gators this Saturday morning in College Station, both teams will be looking for just their second SEC win. Bo Kimmon to Saturday's showdown with a 1-4 and four conference records with the Aggies 3-5 and five overall compared to the Gators 4-4. Four and four. Both teams are coming off losses. The Gators were blown out by number one ranked Georgia 42-20 while the Aggies fell to Ole Miss at home 31-28 and are now trying to snap out of a four-game tailspin. And keep in mind, just a doink away from being 2-6 and six after that missed field goal against Arkansas. Now going forward with freshman Connor Wegman at quarterback with his first start. He did a great job. Um, he came in there, took the men of the huddle, and stepped up when he was needed. And um, you don't expect nothing less from him. You know, he, he's a great person uh, and a great asset for this team. All right, kickoff at Kyle Field is up for 11 a.m. on Saturday morning. San Antonio FC would be one step closer to United Soccer League Championship if they can get by Colorado Springs Switchbacks FC this Sunday in the Western Conference Finals. That's after head coach Alan Marcina, goalkeeper Jordan Farr, and defender Mitchell Taintor were all named finalists for the 2022 USL Championship Award. That's after SAFC tied the league records for most wins at 24, road wins with 13, and shutouts with 17. But all that won't matter if they can't get by the switchbacks on Sunday night. Two very, very good teams, two contrasting styles. Uh, it will come down to who's able to execute you know, consistently throughout the game. It's really difficult to beat a team three times in a season, especially a team as good as Colorado. So it's going to be a fight. It's going to be a bunch of good players going at each other, a bunch of great teams. So it's going to be a great atmosphere, and it's uh, yeah, it's going to be a great game. But we just got to execute, and you know, hopefully everything will fall into place. And they're hoping for another big sellout crowd on hand at Toyota Field, and I think they will get just that. All right. That Looking forward good. to it. Lots of history between those teams. Absolutely, especially this season. You got it. Thanks for that, Greg. Mm -hmm. Our KSAB Q&A coming up next. We're talking to Peter Sakai, the Bear County judge candidate on the Democratic side. It is perhaps the biggest local race to watch, the race for Bear County judge. We're talking to both candidates in our KSAT Q&A. Yesterday, we spoke with the Republican candidate, former County Commissioner Trish DeBerry. Today, we're talking to the Democratic challenger, Judge Peter Sakai. Judge, thank you for being here and sharing some time with us here this evening. You are just about at the finish line, like we chatted about right before we got going here. There are still people out there who have not voted one day left, one full day of early voting plus election day. So I want to start here with what's your message to people out there who have not made a decision yet? That they need to go vote, that their vote is their voice and their power in this community. Uh, I have pledged to listen to all the citizens of Bear County to be your next county judge. And I think it's important that you participate, that you Put your vote in, and that way we know that we can all work together. We've got a lot of problems and issues that we are going to be confronted confronted with in this post-COVID world, and uh, obviously I'm prepared to step up and provide that steady and that dependable leadership 
uh, Bear County knows me and they trust me and they're ready for me to be the next county judge. Judge, you just said it yourself. You've been listening to voters. What have they been telling you? What have you been hearing? And what are some of the biggest challenges that you think we face here in Bear County? Well, obviously, they, they want more out of Bear County in the sense of they, they, uh, they need to understand that Bear County is responsible. The big ticket items are public safety, the court systems, and the university hospital system, the public health. And so they want to see better services. And my commitment to the citizens of Bear County is to make sure that our county government provides a better customer service, a better delivery of services, uh, and that we are connected and dealing with the many issues. Uh, we've got to make sure that our justice system is working well and get it up and running. We've got to make sure that our jail operation is, is an issue that needs to be addressed. And I'm going to work with our elected sheriff, uh, Sheriff Javier Salazar, to deal with those issues at the jail. And then we got an opportunity for a new public health entity. And I wanna make sure that public health, especially mental health and drug and alcohol rehabilitation is at the top of those uh, priorities to fund. We've gotta make sure to take care of, especially what I call the infrastructure of Bear County, and that's the children and families. You know, you mentioned services, you mentioned keeping people connected, and that to me describes internet service, right? One yeah. of the ideas that you have proposed is creating a public internet utility. So why do you think Bear County needs that, and, and how exactly would you get that done as judge? Because we got to treat that digital divide. You know, we got to treat, treat broadband internet uh, the high-speed internet connectivity as a utility. Just like we treat water, we treat electricity, we treat uh, streets and sewers. And that the reason being is we saw that in the COVID world. The COVID world taught us that we have some flaws in infrastructure. And one is the broadband digital divide. And we saw that with students who could not link up to their schools. And we know that we know that the, about the number of children is about 20 percent of those children have kind of gotten lost because they got disconnected from the educational public school system. So we've got to do a better job to have connection with our students. The other group that really needed to rely on the digital uh, uh, broadband uh, high speed Internet was the seniors. We had seniors that were disconnected during that freeze of last year and some people died. They died because they didn't get the warnings. They died because they didn't know that they could go to warming center. They died because they didn't understand that there were uh, opportunities to protect them. And that is a lesson for all of us that what we take for granted uh, sometimes is not available in all parts of our community. So I want to consider a public health entity, just like we have SAW, San Antonio water system, and we have CPS energy for our electricity, we should consider a public utility for internet so that all citizens of Bear County are provided the high speed. Then also too, we need ed public education. We've got to make sure that everybody has the devices to connect to the high speed. And then we need digital literacy. We need to teach, especially, us older seasoned uh, people like me, who sometimes they, I, I have to rely on my children and grandchildren to help me through my technology and technical skill set. So there is a digital literacy that we're going to have to focus on to make sure that we're all connected, because that's the operative word, Myra, is we've got to make sure we're all connected in this community so that everyone is protected. Now, you mentioned it during commercial break, this race, high stakes. You've been judged for over two decades. How does this campaign vary from others? Oh, that's that's a great question, John Paul. You know, obviously, uh, I had a contested primary back in the spring, and we uh, had to fight through that, and, and I prevailed. And then uh, this this fall election uh, has, has had challenges. Uh, you know, I wanted and made a pledge to keep my campaign clean and upbeat and positive. And I have kept that promise, uh, but it's been tough. Uh, there have been some situations where um, me and my opponent have basically kind of got into very confrontational uh, discussions at the, the forums, debates. 
and uh, we, we've had some lively discussions. And when it get, when it got into those negative type discussions, I really feel that the that the public suffers because we weren't talk I, I really enjoyed the forums where we had some really positive conversations about the issues and about our policy differences and how we were going to move forward as a community. And I think that's what the public, I, I can tell you, the public, that's all they want to know. Judge Sakai, how are you going to fix and solve the problems that we have? And I think that's that's what the public wants, and that's what I have done my very best to do in this campaign, and is to pre present a positive message of what I will do for Bear County. And people have a few more days to make their decision. Like you said at the very beginning, get out and vote. Make that Gotta choice. Got to get out and vote. It, it, vote is your power, and we have an opportunity to uh, change the leadership here in Bear County and, and in the state of Texas. And I really am asking everybody to please, please go out and vote and use their power at the ballot. Judge Sakai, thanks so much for your time. We sure appreciate it. Thank you, uh, sir. Uh, hey, where's those Spreester? <laughs> <laughs> you got to put up with me today. He's Sorry. actually, he is on assignment today. He's well, he, not just he's, kicking up his heels. Well, he, was bugging me. He, he, he was bugging me on this one. I was like, okay, Spreester, but <laughs> I wish y'all well. Thank you, Casey. I'm sure he'll give you a, a Spreester session. Yeah, oh, we'll, sure. we'll tell him you said hi. And what in the world is he doing? We'll That's see you next time, Judge. Thank you. We'll be right back. We've got some breaking news into the newsroom now. The San Antonio City Council will vote next week on whether to censure District 1 Councilman Mario Bravo and issue a vote of no confidence. In September, the city contracted an outside attorney to investigate Bravo's behavior ahead of the city council vote on the annual budget. According to the agenda documents posted online within the past half hour, Bravo aggressively approached and berated a fellow city council member about her position on an item on the city council agenda. Then the other members of was District 7 Councilwoman Ana Sandoval, whom Bravo previously dated. Now, the investigation found that Bravo's actions were in violation of the city council's rules and expectations, specifically directives on equal employment opportunity and anti-harassment and violence in the workplace. A city hall source says the other council members, apart from Bravo and Sandoval, were briefed on the investigation's findings during a lengthy executive session this morning. We are working to learn more on this breaking story. We'll have more for you on the night beat. Let's take a quick look outside with live cam. We are headed towards the weekend, and as always, we're still looking for some rain, Adam. Yeah, we are. We need some rain, and we'll have a little bit of dampness to start the day tomorrow, and soon I'll have an update on our storm potential for tomorrow evening. But right now we're at 82 degrees. We'll fall through the 70s this evening. Noticeable humidity. More on timing and possibility of those storms and who's most likely to see them in just a bit. All right, let's talk about the forecast before we get to the low humidity that I would like. We've got some storms to talk about, Adam. Yeah, small potential for storms tomorrow evening around and shortly after this time. So within about the next 24 to 27 hours, that's when we could see a few storms. Let's get right to the chances there. We gave it about a 30% shot, so not a whole lot of coverage around town here. Better chances the farther east you are of San Antonio. I mean, we're talking especially Hallettsville, Shiner, Molten, even Gonzales down toward Carn City, Falls City, you have better chances. But around here, 30% chance of just these passing sprinkles and very light showers for the first half of the day. And then 6 to 10 p.m., about a 30% chance of a few of those thunderstorms. But if we do see one around town, it does run the risk of becoming strong to severe with the straight line wind gust being the primary threat. So here's the big picture. A lot of moisture, upper level disturbance digging into the southwestern U.S. This is a good potent system. It's good for the ski resorts as well in the Rockies, but it's just not gonna dig far enough south to give us that good push of energy that we need to generate widespread rain. Cloudy tomorrow morning, future cast shows is 7 a.m. and a few spritzes and sprinkles, kind of like the past few days. A Little bit of dampness, but nothing to really show for it. Then into the afternoon, we'll clear out a little bit, have some sunshine, which will destabilize us a bit. Then the cold front hits, around 7 p.m. Once that cold front hits, it could be just enough to kickstart some of those storms locally, but most of the action will be north of town up I-35, especially Austin area, and then northward all the way into Oklahoma and beyond. We're just right on the tail end of the activity. Eight o'clock, 
little bit of development possible. And then by 9, 10 o'clock, we expect it to fill the radar to fill in a little bit more east of San Antonio. That's the key. The main takeaway here east of San Antonio. So here's the main takeaways 6 to 10 p.m. mostly east of town. We are going to watch for that off chance of a severe storm, especially northeast of San Antonio. Uh, most of us bottom line plan for dry, just breezy conditions. You'll notice some gusty winds, non thunderstorm related winds throughout the day tomorrow. Also another Another impactful uh, element of this cold front that hits is morning temperatures. It's been spring like the past couple of mornings. This weekend is going to be fall like a return to fall like temperatures for the morning hours this upcoming weekend, along with a lack of humidity this weekend as well. But let's break down tomorrow. 7 a.m. 71 degrees by 5 o'clock. We're 83 a few sprinkles here and there. A little bit of dampness in that time frame. 6 to 10 p.m. We have that slight chance about a 30% chance and then by 11 p.m. tomorrow evening our sky is going to clear out and actually you'll have some low humidity around town. It's going to be very pleasant. It's going to feel more fall like again this weekend. Highs right near 80 degrees, a lot of sunshine and then next week. Yeah, the humidity returns quickly, even Sunday night, and we're just going to have more morning fog and dampness for next week with highs in the low 80s. <laughs> oh, I've been taking you through the creation of my latest thermometers that I'm working on on some of the latest thermometers I'm working on. Here's our next step. So we last last week I brought you through, you know, a, a recap of what we've done. But now what I need to do is measure the district distance between the calibration points. Those black lines are our calibration points that we worked for over the past couple of weeks. Measure the distance in millimeters, of course, and then take notes and the corresponding temperature with that distance. Then <laughs> then comes the handy dandy spreadsheet. And next week we'll be uh, talking more about this spreadsheet and how it helps me to actually make the scales for the thermometer. You got the regression equation right there. You got your coefficients you got to plug in and your range and all this other stuff. And then it'll basically make a scale for that thermometer according to your calibration points. So those calibration points better be accurate. Otherwise, your thermometer <laughs> worthless then. Not even it'll be worthless. All right, but a very accurate thermometer today goes to Nazi Blumenberg of Fair Oaks Ranch. Congratulations. Go to ksat.com slash thermometer to enter the drawing. That looks complicated. Giving us a math science. You get, once. you get used to it. You get used to it. We'll <laughs> let you get used to it. You can tell us about it. Just last it's week, an acquired taste. I accidentally said uh, thermostat Thursday and I think oh. a single tear came out of Adam's eye. I do want to make a public apology. <laughs> Thank I you. loved it. Thank you. I was all for it. <laughs> of course you were. <laughs> <laughs> the buzz is coming up next. Good news for people who want to drink something other than hot chocolate around the Christmas tree. Miller Lite has brought back its beer based gifts for the upcoming holiday season, and that includes a new item, a Christmas tree keg stand. It's a fully functioning tree stand that fits around a quarter barrel keg of beer. Among the other items up for sale, Miller Lite holiday sweaters and my personal favorite beer mints, which fit around 12 ounce cans and Today is National Sandwich Day. It's the birthday of the fourth Earl of Sandwich, who was born on November 3rd of 1718. The quick meal favorite is to believed to be his namesake. Okay, so big question. What constitutes a sandwich? Some suggest something quite controversial, a hot dog. That's wrong, though. A hamburger <laughs> or a wrap should be considered a sandwich, but other people stick with the traditional stacks of meat, cheese, veggies between slices of bread. Now we have no answer for you. This is open to interpretation, but all sandwiches can be enjoyed on this day. I like throwing in some chips every once in a while to get that crunch. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. my grandfather used to always do that. Now I know what I'm eating for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Tomorrow morning, humid right near 70 and a little damp again, uh, sprinkles, but you know, Uvalde 68, 71 in Gonzales and Pleasanton and around 70 in San Antonio. By the afternoon, we'll squeeze in some sunshine, could even push 90 degrees farther south and west of town, but around here about 85. Thanks, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 6. We'll see you all at 10.